Good morning. I am Professor Ramesh Goyal. I am Vice Chancellor at Delhi Pharmaceutical Science and Research University, which is the first pharmaceutical science university in the country. And perhaps it is the second one after the China, which, has, which was the one established in 1987. I have done my post-graduation in Medical College, Baroda. And right from my beginning of my career or with my studies, I used to have a passion for the medical sciences. Although I did not get into MBBS, but with the MSc Medical, I really get into the world of medicines. I started my career in 1978, but since I had a strong base in the medical college, wherein I could have even the dissection of the cadaver to all the basic science, hardcore knowledge and association with clinician, it continued from uh, even after joining the Pharmacy Institute, in L, uh, which is again the first pharmacy college of the country, LF College of Pharmacy and Dawar. Now, although I got several things in my life, I got currently, I have published more than 310 full papers. I have traveled almost more than 20 countries. I have given 31 lectures abroad and more than 212 within India on an invitation basis. But the focus has been on the research and especially the public health sciences. And this is like, I still remember in 1984, I used to treat or rather advise the patients that what they should ask the doctor and what they should not do without doctor. That has been my passion, although that branch came as a clinical pharmacy after 1990, but I used to practice directly or indirectly. And even today, my family members, many times they ask me, in spite of the advice, advice given by the doctors. But I have never acted like a doctor that, okay, I will give you a prescription and I will write that, no. I used to listen to them and I used to send a note to the doctor that please attend, probably you are missing this. And it has worked a lot. I will not go into details of my, what are awards, by God grace, I got 65 awards in my life. I have got, I have guided 173 postgraduate and 44 PhD students. And that is the reason that I have been, uh, I mean, invited and I, have, and I have published 13 books, which are, well, the first book start was published in 1980. So they are being used by various uh, students across the country. And that's why they know me. I mean, wherever I go, I really feel thrilled when they say, oh, sir, we, go, we have read your book. So that is what is the greatest satisfaction. But more satisfaction I'm getting when I see that, yes, because of my advice or my intervention, some patient got dramatic relief. And that's what is my true sense, the clinical research. And I am very much excited here to become the vice chancellor of the university because at the end of my career, rather, because I'm already 62, I feel that this is a great opportunity to put whatever I have learned so far into the practice, into the see that I, if I can contribute a little bit to the public health, which is a need of the day. Why? Because on one side, there's a lot of unawareness. Now, unawareness is not prevailing in the one who are uneducated. I will say medical awareness is more in the society who are really educated. Many times they end up in wrong practices. I'm not talking of simple diabetes or like that. People are talking a lot. Simple eye, the problem of eye, I myself landed up in the problem of retinal detachment. It, I feel this was nothing but it was my ignorance about the subject because my specialization at that time used to be only those cardiovascular and all that. But I, I felt how, how, what I lost while when I got the retinal detachment, although by God goes recovered. But the same thing is happening in the hearing, which 
And in fact, I must say that I came in touch with the double helical for this magazine through Dr. Arun Agrawal. And uh, I had our Avrish Tiwari ji. And I was, in fact, uh, whenever I used to talk to Dr. Arun Agrawal, he used to say that, how can you ignore the ENT? Very important. So, yes, so such public awareness is required. Now, we have the program Master of Public Health. Now, this is the advantage of the university that being the university, pharmacy university, pharmacy is connected to medicines, physicians, the public. So, in fact, it is more multidisciplinary in nature. We teach on, on one side the mathematical models, other side biological sciences, hardcore. On one side, hardcore clinical structures or clinical setup, we are supposed to be uh, having the clear pharmacy practice. On the other side, we are supposed to have hardcore knowledge of the new drug development. What are the regulatory requirements? So this makes the uh, necessity, this is where the necessity comes, that we must have the university which can integrate all this without any bureaucracy or without any political intervention than that. And that's what I am excited and I feel that what uh, Double Helical magazine has been doing, it is not simply a magazine, it tells a lot about the real practical experiences, the articles from the experts who are actually involved in public to see. Okay, there are articles, I mean, Nowadays, the Google and all people do it, but they don't have many times they have such blogs or they are written by just one or two experiences. Here, the experiences come by virtue of the real life experiences of the senior doctors or senior practitioners. This is what is making this magazine more impressive and ultimately definitely useful in the public also. As far as, uh, again, I used to give lectures. I remember in MS University of Baroda when I was the Vice Chancellor. In one week, three incidences happened about the heart attack. I invited, at that time we used to have that building where in 250 were the employees of the office staff only. I called them and I gave the lecture how to get warning signals, how to identify warnings of the attack or like that, and what, how to act on it. And believe me, after that, there were no such incidences. There were some cases because hypertension, when it occurs, it may lead to stroke, it may lead to heart attack. Such things were averted because of after that lecture. And that is what is required to be done. I never gave in that lecture that what are the types of diabetes and this thing and all. No, it's not. It is required for the classes. In real public, what is required, that has to be told. How to identify that when you have dots coming in your eyes, it is in probably the first indication of the something got wrong going on in the retina. And once the retina is lost, everything is lost. You cannot do anything after that. So, there are many such topics which requires to be told. The very posture on which the, the how you are sitting, we have we physiotherapy. Now, people feel when they have a sophisticated chair in the office, they don't know probably that their body structure is not allowing, it may not be compatible. You have to have a proper chair, which may be a simple looking, but it should be as per the body. So there are like that, there are many things coming up. And we have the Innovation and Incubation Foundation, the medical devices. It is very unfortunate that the concept of the medical devices throughout the world, of course, the regulations are not that stingy. But when it comes to biopharmaceuticals, I must say that 70% things are imported even today. It may be rather relatively low figure. Everything is getting imported and making the genomic-based diagnostic as out of reach or I will say uh, they are not being, uh, they are not common in our country and it is required. Although with the diversity 
our country is the source of that information. And many times I feel that probably the foreign company investment of R&D and all, it is because of this diversity, because they get the leads from that. Because it is the samples which will give them the biogenomic leads, I mean the poly, because there is a diversity. And that is what is required. The, I was very much excited when I got to read this National Health Policy 2017. And uh, the affordability was one of the thing, uh, one of the key objectives mentioned in that. Prevention diseases. Yes, it is required, but prevention is not, or rather the affordability will not come only by the government insurances. There are many more things which can come in. I was the member and the vice president of the International Academy of Cardiovascular Sciences India chapter. So I gave this that what our ISCS can give. Like these, the prices of stands have gone down. That That is a welcome step. But there are many other things which are still required to be done. So in that light, this health policy has to be thoroughly studied even by the, not only by the medical people, but the paramedical people like pharmacy and others also. So I am sure that with the, uh, I mean, with such public initiatives, I, I will not consider this any something like a selling, it's a magazine or something. It is, it is a sort of a social service. Here in the this university, I hope that I will integrate myself or the university with the hospitals. It will not be a simple academic institution. It should be part of the hospital. We have the OPD that is all night for the physiotherapy, but probably that is not enough. We may have to go and have a real tie-ups with the hospital. We are already starting one of the program, PG diploma in clinical research with the help of Apollo. We are already into the dialogue and we have already framed the skeleton for the post PG diploma in biopharmaceuticals, PG diploma in pharmacovigilance and outcome research with the help with the Biocon Academy. So we are trying to have various courses with various institutions or hospitals wherein there is a direct involvement and we can go further. So like that we have the uh, the collaboration with Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission, which is playing a lead role in the Pharmacovigilance Center, National Coordination Center of Pharmacovigilance is there. So we have already tied up. Now DRDO, the Defense Research Organization, they are having for their defense people various formulations they are making and many things cannot go in the public or they cannot have direct we are trying to see that if we can come out and we can come together to make some products like this, which are of importance uh, for those people, but maybe for the civilians also. Better. So dreams are too many. I don't know how many we can fulfill, but we have made a modest beginning. The, yes, I'm uh, happy that all my Board of Governors to even the Honorable Chancellor, Lieutenant Governor, our Anil Bairalji, or our Deputy CM, the Manish Shogar, they are all taking interest in the university along with my our staff members. And we are hopeful that we should be in a position to give something to the nation at large. But yes, for the public also. Thank you. Thank you.